Yo, what's the story? Here's a whole bunch of mistakes you need to avoid with the DJI Osmo Pocket 3. Your selfie footage is flipped the wrong way around when you've got the camera pointing at you. Make sure you turn off selfie flip. Now you won't see this in the preview on the screen, but in your final footage you will, where things will look not from left to right, but they look the right way around. Now for whatever reason, if you discover this later, you can just flip it around in your editing software. Presets are a great way to customize a mode whatever way you'd like to shoot. But creating a preset and actually using a preset, they're saved and stored in two different locations. You gotta swipe down to get access to the preset settings, that's where you save it. And when it comes to actually selecting a preset that you wanna use, well, you gotta go back to the old mode selection where all the other modes are stored. That's where the presets are to use. A little bit counterintuitive, kinda makes sense, but still just it throws a lot of folks. One of the great features of the Osmo Pocket 3 is the face tracking option. So the Osmo Pocket 3 will follow you wherever you go. However, you have to enable this each time, which is a bit of a pain in the butt if you're going to be using it quite a lot. So what you need to do is just enable FT Selfie on and anytime the Osmo Pocket 3 turns on, then if it sees your face, it's going to start tracking it. Speaking of tracking, the Osmo Pocket 3 will also track objects, but you've got to double tap whatever it is you want to track on the screen. Then you'll see active track enabled and it's going to keep that in shot. And if you want to stop tracking, bonus tip, just hit the joystick, click it, done. There's a whole ton of modes and so many functions in the Osmo Pocket 3 and a lot of the time what you want to do, you're probably not going to see that even if you know you're in the right mode. For example, the pano photo. What if you want to take a 3x3 three three or a 180? You gotta swipe up and then you can jump into the function you need within that mode. So just remember, swipe up in all of the modes for those extra functions. The case that comes with the Osmo Pocket 3 is pretty solid. But remember this when you're putting it in, start at the head and tilt down. And keep in mind as well, if the camera rotates when you're doing this, you gotta take it back out because otherwise there's no wiggle room to turn the camera and you don't wanna bust it. So get it back in and then push it down until you hear that satisfying Flickering lights are a big problem, especially if you're in some of the slow motion modes on the Osmo Pocket 3. There's a quick fix to this. I know what you're saying. Oh, you're going to talk about the flicker option and the settings and turn that to auto. Nope, that's not it. What you need to do is be in the right slow motion mode. If you're in the US, for example, then you need to be in 4K 120 and you're not going to get any flickering lights. I'm in a PAL region, so if I'm in 4K 120, it's flicker central. But if I swipe up and change to 4K 100, or I go from 60 to 50, no more flicker. It just works. So keep that in mind, and that's a quick fix for a big problem that's gonna stump so many folks. Now, you're probably like me, and you don't need to use the glamour effects in the DJI Osmo Pocket 3, but for whatever reason, if you do, you can only turn them on or off within the Osmo Pocket 3. If you wanna modify them and do your T's and your I's and your whatever, then you gotta do that through the DJI Mimo app on your phone once it's connected to the Osmo Pocket Tree, but you're beautiful enough as it is. On a sunny day, having the brightness whacked up to 100% gives you a good, clear representation of what you're seeing. However, keep in mind, at 100%, the battery's gonna go down that bit much quicker, and the Osmo Pocket 3 is gonna generate a lot more heat because the screen is on full whack. Turn it down to 50% at least. Bring it down to where you can still see it, but don't have it at 100% all the time. Uh -uh. The Osmo Pocket 3 tracking modes are great, but they're not in every single mode. So keep that in mind if you're banging the screen and going, come on, why isn't it working? They're not in every single mode. Now that all may change in firmware updates, but for now, be aware that tracking isn't in every single mode on the Osmo Pocket 3. So that's going to save you the trouble of... The next one really, really caught me out. In fact, it screwed up part of a video. The color modes in the Osmo Pocket 3 are more than two. So you've got the normal color and what everybody's talking about, oh, you got that D-Log 10-bit, which looks insanely good. However, there's also HLG 10-bit, which unless you're working in a HDR workflow, <laughs> no. And it really screwed up some of the footage that I shot because I just thought, oh, there's two. I didn't even see D-Log. I know what I saw, I just pressed it. That's the problem. So double check the color modes if you're going in doing some grading. Make sure you're on D-Log unless you're in that HLG HDR workflow. But yeah, it's the third one in. If you're using the default settings for video, that's a bit of a mistake. Yeah, the image looks great, but it's still very digital. It's just 
there's something about it. It doesn't look that cinematic. It doesn't look that natural. Now to achieve that, what you need to do is jump into the image adjustment in video, bring down the sharpness to negative two and bring down the noise reduction also to negative two. And then you've got a far more pleasing image. Motion lapse looks great on the Osmo Pocket 3 as it does a time lapse and it goes from point A to point B to point C. However, it's quite confusing to set up. First off, you gotta swipe up and make sure you're in motion lapse mode. And then you're gonna see a little plus symbol on the screen. So position the Osmo Pocket 3 wherever you want for the first or the beginning of this motion lapse. Tap the little plus symbol, then go to the next position using the joystick on the Osmo Pocket 3, and then the third and final position. And once you've got one, two, three in the top right corner, that's all well and good. It's then you press record, nothing else. Really confusing, but that's the easiest way to do it. Putting on the brakes here for one second. Right now, if you're getting value out of this video and you think other folks could get value out of this video for the Osmo Pocket 3, make sure you hit the like button. That'll tell the YouTube robots to give it to other folks. Right. On to the next mistake you really should avoid, and this is a biggie. If things are looking way too fast and jerky and all over the place, make sure you check your rotational speed. If you wanna make this a little bit more cinematic and natural looking, bring this down too slow. It's far more gradual, far more natural looking, and yeah, otherwise it just looks nuts. You can charge the Pocket Tree to 80% in just 16 minutes and to 100% in another 16 minutes, but, don't make the mistake of plugging it into any old charger or your laptop. Uh -uh. You ain't going to charge it that fast that way. What you need is a charger that's going to output 30 watts or more and then plug in using the USB-C cable and you're good to go. You will get fast charging on the screen and that'll let you know this baby's going to supercharge up real, real quick. This mistake is possibly one of the most annoyingest things and of course it's right across a lot of DJI products. Where the SD card goes in, you think, okay, it, sh it should kind of go in this way, but nah, it, it doesn't. You gotta turn it around. So you gotta keep the writing on the SD card away from the screen and then you push it in. Really annoying and I'm sure you've probably figured it out by now, but do not force this in because you could break some really important things on the SD card and more importantly on the Osmo Pocket 3. So just, yeah, don't force. There's no right way to hold the Osmo Pocket 3, but there is a wrong way to hold it. You've got to be very conscious of where the mics on the Osmo Pocket 3 are. They're on each side and they're on the back as well. So don't kind of have your hands up here covering the screen or maybe your finger up here. You do not want to cover any of the mics because, well, you know, you've got important stuff to say, right? You want people to hear you at your best. That was so cheesy. Um, for whatever reason, if you absolutely demolish all of the settings on the pocket tree, or you screw stuff up, or you're just like, you know what? I need to start again. Then if you dig into the settings, you can get factory reset, and that's gonna bring it back to day one when you took it out of the box. Chances are you're not gonna correct all of these mistakes on the Osmo Pocket 3 straight away, but at least you're aware of them and how to fix them. Something you should also be aware of is this video here around the DJI Osmo Pocket 3. You really gotta check that out.